Today is Tuesday, and on Tuesday we look at matters your money. But today we'd like to concentrate on a demographic which is mainly campus students or the youth. We do know that a huge percentage of this country actually comprises of the youth. And one of the things that we have realized over time is that some of them are ill-prepared when it comes to finances. I remember reading one book, and they say that one of the things that you'll never be taught in a school or an organized institution is things to to do with money how we relate to money largely depends on how we have seen our parents how we have seen those ahead of us relate to money so does that paradigm need to change perhaps it does and i'm joined this morning by michael vodo who's a personal finance consultant thank you for joining us no. and we also have esther karaoke who's a youth project manager with Centonomy. Yes. Thank you for joining us. Um, and let's start off from the fact that, do you agree? There's a book that I read and um, they were indicating that one, unfortunately, majority of us do not have an opportunity to learn how to interact or relate to money. And as a result, we end up doing that in the wrong way, depending on how we grew up, depending on how we saw our parents and those ahead of us uh, do that. So I'll start with you, Esther. Uh I think it's true, um, especially for us Africans, we, our parents don't tell us what they do with their money. So if we grow up not see, not understanding these things so, uh, at home, mm. then it becomes very difficult to do things, these things even so much later. So that's when now people start getting into doing uh, different courses or reading different books. Okay, and, and I mean, when you talk about our parents not even sharing, I remember the only thing I remember my parents talking about money mm -hmm. is that money doesn't grow on trees. And that didn't, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that didn't do much in terms of explaining, okay, it doesn't grow on trees, but where does it come from? Mm -hmm. All I saw is that they went to work and came back home. Uh, but Mike, do you agree that uh, there needs to be more interaction, uh, especially with the younger generation, on how to uh, get more financially intelligent? Of course, Mike. I 100% agree that. Because the sooner you start interacting with money, the sooner you start uh, knowing how to manage your finances, mm -hmm. the better you will, have, you will be in future. Yeah? And we say this at Centonomy, there is no right time or wrong time to start uh, learning about money. Right. The perfect time is now. So mm -hmm. you're never too late, you're never too early. The perfect time is now. Is now. Yes. And, and is that age restricted? Because I've seen, again, other uh, areas where they talk about uh, teaching your children or the younger ones by how maybe, for instance, when you go to the supermarket, yeah. things must be on a list. If yes. they're not on the shopping list, then they do not get into the trolley. Is that, do you think that's part of financial discipline and teaching? Uh, I think so. I think it's the small lessons when you're young that matter. Mm -hmm. um, I normally say uh, as a parent, you should start, uh, as long as uh, the kid can understand or comprehend what money is or that it's a form of exchange and value and all that because um, even when they get to around 9, 10, some of them, depending on how they are raised by their parents, depending on those very small lessons, they become very sharp and there are the people who even start succeeding very early in life. Okay. Yeah. Michael, let's now concentrate on that demographic campus, students and the youth. And um, I know that financially speaking, there are certain principles that guide and govern, you know, how things operate. Do those principles apply when it comes to the youth or do the youth have a different set of principles? No, Mike, the principles are apply across the board yeah and uh, now for the youth we normally say especially here in Kenya we say we don't have money or oh, I can't manage my pocket money nicely but the thing is uh, this money that you're saying you don't have it is because it is going to other places yeah mm -hmm. because you do not have a plan for your money I normally say if you do not have a plan for your money someone else will have a plan for your money so we advise people to have start having a plan for your money even before you receive some money, what, what, what do you intend to do with it? And this thing that you intend to do with it, how will it be of benefit to you? Okay, and now when you talk about a plan, um, I'm sure most of them have a plan. It's only that maybe the plan is not the right plan. Because uh, mm. the minute the money comes, hey, there's a club, uh, there's a <laughs> rave here, yeah. there's uh, this thing I've been wanting to get, me, whatever. So the plan is there. It, it, and, that's it, why, and that's why I said, Mike, eh? you have to have a plan for your money. Because if you do not have someone else will have a plan for your money. Ah, okay. And then again, this plan should be of beneficial to you. Yeah? It should be of benefit to you personally. Mm -hmm. Think about it, yeah? If you don't have a plan for your money, I will come and tell you, hey, Mike, let's go for coffee, let's go for lunch. And but, I'll be like, yeah, I have yeah, some extra dollars yeah, in but my because pocket. Because hey. those extra dollars, you don't have a plan for them, I am now coming with a plan for you. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so how do I come up with that plan, Esther? 
Um, and, and you know, the word plan already sounds so structured. It sounds so um, corporate. It already yes. sounds so... How do I come up with a plan? Um, I think we, we make it like very complicated when you think about like um, making a plan for our money. We think, like, we think big first instead of thinking small and starting with what we have. You may just have um, an allowance of let's say 500 per week or 1000 per week. Start seeing the things that you can do with that money. Don't think first the things that you can do with 100,000 and you don't have 100,000. Mm. So you say I'll do something when I have 100,000. You can start, okay, I have 1000 per week. What what are my goals? Because first you have to set uh, like certain priorities or set your goals. Maybe I want to achieve this, I want to buy this phone and by this laptop uh like what's the end game then now you can backtrack it and say i want to buy this item i want to get to this point maybe in six months so that's how you backtrack it and see each week how much do i need to save each week how much do i need to get so it helps you like have a very clear path of where you're getting to. okay michael how important is my lifestyle uh, mm -hmm. as a student as a young person when it comes to my financial planning because i'm sure uh, there's a certain lifestyle i would like to have as a student it is actually very important because when you start living a certain lifestyle especially if you're in campus and you're living this kind of lifestyle Probably because your parents are able to finance you. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you go out there, you get a job and it's not that well paying. And then you are accustomed to this nice lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It becomes a bit hard to maintain it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. That's why we tell people you try to live within your means. Yeah? Always, always, always do not spend money that you do not have. Yes, always try and be within your means. Within your means, yes. Okay, regardless of what's happening regardless, in the crowd. Because, you know, there's always something that comes up. Things are, there, billboards are there everywhere on the mm. streets telling you, buy this, do this. And they're all trying this. to get your yeah, money yeah. out of your pocket. And they're all trying to get their <laughs> advertisements everywhere. Mm. Yeah. So, again, if you don't have a plan for your money, mm. these other people will tell you how to spend your money. Esther, so, your lifestyle mm. is very important. So, you should know what is important to you. This lifestyle, do you want it to live it now? Or do you want to leave it later? If you leave it now, will you also be, be able to leave it later? Mm. Will your children and generations after you be able to live this lifestyle that you want to live now? Sounds like what my dad used to call mm. the delayed gratification. Yes. Is yes. that what it is? Yes. Yes. And uh, how important is what I do today mm. in terms of where I'll be tomorrow, financially speaking? Uh, I think it's very important uh, in terms of, um, let's say just from... Uh, perspective of money so whatever I do today the choice I make today will affect tomorrow so for example in the age of Facebook Instagram looking at what other people are doing you may choose to do something else just because somebody else is doing yet they have a totally different path so when you understand your own path and that life is a process then you'll understand and be in a better position to earn that 100,000 that I want to earn in two years, three years. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll put you guys on the spot here because somebody yeah. watching might say, these are very young guys. What do they know about money? What do they know about what experience do they have? Michael, can you tell me what experience do you have with money and possibly what are some of the things that maybe you've done differently that today you can say this, is, this goes down on the records as proof that I am actually living the life that uh, I am teaching? Oh, Michael, you're actually putting us on the spot. <laughs> now, uh, we are, all, we are all human, yeah? And uh, I also admit that when I was young, when I was in campus, I did not have good control of, over my finances, yeah? And it really had a toll on me, yeah? Because I wanted to live a certain lifestyle that uh, other guys were living, but I did not understand how they were living that lifestyle, yeah? But when I came to understand that uh, I can only live the lifestyle that I can afford now, that I, uh, I am the one who is in who is in control of my life, over my finances, yeah? Uh, I came to understand that the, where I am now, yeah, it is only I who can decide where I want to live and how I want to live, yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, saying that, uh, I apply the very simple principles of money, yeah? And that's why I'm here today. Mm -hmm. I tell guys, always save fast. Save before you spend, save fast, yeah? Save something small, yeah? No matter how much, save fast by paying yourself. Always put something aside for a rainy day, always invest you know 
always and again always have a plan for your money that is those are the principles that i live by as a young person okay esther what experiences would you share with the youth and say this is what i have implemented in my life and i can see the difference and tell us about the difference um okay so you you said about like money doesn't grow on trees that's what you used to hear from my parents from my dad that was almost every single day mm -hmm. as long as school fees is paid everything else money doesn't grow on, tree, uh, on trees so i knew that money was very hard to come by hard to come by mm -hmm. very very scarce so all through even up to the end of high school i knew that you can't even get money in fact it's not even possible to live a good lifestyle mm -hmm. or even to sustain yourself because you know you've grown up seeing their struggle so as i came to campus and started seeing different people and all that and then now i did the autonomy campus edition class i was actually able to understand that uh, what you have to do is to create value to get mm -hmm. to get money mm -hmm. right so um as a result of what i've been able to learn through the years i know that there is money but i know also know that you have to work for that money and you have to get rid of the mentality that there is no money because once you close yourself in that mentality that there is no money then you'll never progress what they call a scarcity mentality yes scarcity mm. mentality mm. so once you understand that actually money is there so you work towards creating value you start looking at opportunities what can i do here what extra can i do here even though i've not learned this because for me i studied biotechnology in school mm -hmm. but then even uh, uh at centennial may became a campus brand ambassador because i knew maybe i can offer a skill here a skill here and that's what got me to where i am mm -hmm. so even as young people think about other things that can do they it's not that you don't have money or rather money is not there money is there but it's what the value. Are, yeah, it's, it's the it's, value it's that the you're exchange. offering and maybe yes. michael just to understand further yeah. about value uh, how does one create value? Because at the end of the day, if you think about it, people get paid different amounts or even earn different amounts depending on the value that you bring on board. Yes, now, I'll use a very simple illustration to explain value. Uh, let's take a t-shirt, a, a plain white t-shirt. And uh, let's take another plain white t-shirt and then uh, let's put something on it, like just a simple brand. Uh, and let's take it to the market. Which one do you think will go will be more expensive? Probably the one with the brand. Yes, and that again, that is how you add value. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is just a simple a simple illustration of what value is on how you can add value. Again, uh, how can you do something different than the way other people do it? How can you do it more effective? How can you do it? You know, uh, using the little resources, using very little resources other mm -hmm. than someone else will use a lot of resources to do the same thing again that is value mm. yeah okay now something that i wish i learned ages ago and yeah. i'm learning this now and maybe i'd like us to speak to that esther i'll start with you is time value mm. the fact that if for instance and again i'll try use an example where if i started uh, say for instance saving towards my pension mm. uh, when i was 18 Yes. The value that I would rip out of it at the age of 50, mm. as compared to one who starts at 30, is, I mean, it's two worlds apart. It yes. can really be a yeah. matter of life and death in terms yes. of how you live your life after retirement. Yes. Mm. Time value. Do you teach on time value and uh, maybe just underscore the importance of time value? Uh, yes, we do teach on the time value of money. And um, it's something that, uh, it's not a difficult com uh, com concept to understand. It's easy when you're dedicated towards it. Uh, I think we normally advise people to look uh, at the end game, or rather what's your plan. As you said, for example, for you, you want to, let's say, for example, you want to retire early, mm. and even for young people as millennials, we say you want to work until you are 35, then travel and all that. So it's up to you to see where you are now. How many years do I have? towards um you know that point let's say i want to retire at 35 and start traveling and even uh how much do i need at that point at that point so that i can sustain you know, that kind of lifestyle where you're traveling every time mm. so you have to like under uh, look at the time uh, sorry time. sorry I'll, I'll, I'll have to interrupt you michael okay. maybe just to take that up i think there's a slight challenge there with the microphone which we're going to sort out but yeah time value your 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 uh, underscoring the time value aspect of it and how important it is to ensure that we use time valuably as esther was saying yeah you always have to have an end goal what do you want to achieve and when do you want to achieve it yeah this is time value of money now uh, you know that a dollar today and a shilling today is not to, uh, a, a shilling or a dollar tomorrow why because a dollar today is more valuable why because you can use it today yeah other than waiting for tomorrow and we also know that there is inflation 
yeah so we uh, having in mind all these things yeah we have to have uh, we have to have control of our money today we have to start investing today we have to start saving now so that we can achieve that goal that we want to achieve mm. in future if it is retirement for you the earlier you start saving for it the earlier you start contributing to your pension then when you hit that retirement age the bigger your pension will be mm. if it is uh, traveling that you want to travel the earlier you start saving for it now then uh, the earlier you can also travel because if you wait if you want to travel like five years and you wait for the fourth year to start saving mm. then you still you have a uh, good time but if you start saving now and you want to travel in five years it will be actually be even easier now when you come to Centronomy, we will show you what do you want to achieve how much is it then we will break it down to you what do you need to put down every day so that you can achieve it when you need to achieve it Yes. Okay, and there's also the question of, um, of time value, but also avenues of saving. Because when we talk about time value, the earlier you start saving, yes. uh, the earlier you can reap the benefits of yes. that saving, and the earlier you can ease your stress even uh, as you get older. Yes. What avenues do students or the youth have for saving? Now, avenues of saving are many. We have, uh, we have bank products all over. We have mobile money now. It is actually very easy for us to save now. What I always tell people is, if you are saving, always make sure that you have at least two bank accounts, yeah? Because you can't have one bank account and say, this bank account will account for all my transactions, all my savings. Then you, I don't think you'll be doing justice to yourself, yeah? Mm. I always tell people, everywhere I speak, everywhere I go, I tell people, at least have two accounts, yeah? One savings account, at least one current account for your day-to-day -day transactions, so that this savings account, you do not touch it. Uh, not, not unless you, it is what you've been saving for. And I always tell people, uh, if you go to a bank and they give you an ATM card for that savings account, please tell them no. Yeah? Because <laughs> politely decline. Politely decline, because that ATM card uh, might be distraction, temptation. temptation, yeah. You yeah. see a good shoe, and then you're like, ah, but I don't have money. And then you remember, oh, I have some savings somewhere. Mm. But these savings are not for the shoe. Mm. That's why I said, uh, make it hard for you to access, a bit hard to access your savings. That's why I always tell people, have at least two accounts. One for your current uh, things here and there, and then the other for your savings. Okay. And this, for your savings, Make it hard to access that money. Mm. Yes. Esther, yeah, mm. your thoughts also on savings. And somebody once told me that ATM actually stands for a terrible mistake. ATM, the, you <laughs> know, the, the, the card. So okay. maybe for our savings accounts, it would actually be a terrible mistake yes. to have that. Mm, I think also it's the display. You have to cultivate the display. As much as now he's saying that you need to have the two accounts and you know one for one you limit yourself. Also, it's, it's something that you develop over time. And you can start, it's just start with what you have, especially mobile banking offers, you know, certain saving options where you can save and not access your money. have your phone mm. and you can start just start with where you are, start with the, even the mobile banking options that you have. Don't think big fast, think where where am I now? What do I need to do now? And what, what can I use now to get there? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Michael, we'll need to conclude uh, not too long from now. If you were to give five golden rules or whatever number of golden rules to the youth, what would they be in terms of making sure what they do today will have a definite impact on their finances tomorrow? As I said before, uh, always pay yourself first by saving and investing. Before you do anything else, when you get some money, always save some first and then spend later because when you spend and then you want to save you'll find that there's nothing left to, uh, to save actually that is rule number one always pay yourself faster yeah? by saving and investing again we always tell people to focus on assets and what are assets assets are things that put money in your pocket like literally if it is something that you're buying and it's not putting money in your pocket then it's not an asset yeah? we tell people always focus on assets yes okay Esther? Um, for me, I have a very simple rule. Understanding, even for campus people, understand that life is a process and that you'll eventually get there. Don't be in a hurry to get to a place just because you saw somebody else doing it mm -hmm. because now that will uh, make you make the wrong decisions about money and if, or even just um, ruin your savings plan and things like that. So understand that life is a process. You will get there and just start with what you have. Okay. Yes. And maybe as we close, if somebody wanted more of this,
information, visit our website www.centonomy.com, visit our social media pages on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, and uh, you can always check us out. We have a class starting on uh, this Saturday, 23rd February. It's a class for young guys in campus. No, 23rd February, Luther Plaza at 9 a.m. All right, thank yes. you very much, Michael Dodo and Esther Karyuki for joining us this morning yeah. on to discuss about your money. Well, that's where we wind up the show. But a quick reflection on what we've talked about today. The question that we were asking uh, was what you think is a potential threat to the legacy of Uhuru Kenyatta or Jubilee for that matter. And I'll just read some of your comments. We have Bill al Hakiz who says legacy with a question mark, which of course means he doubts whether there's any legacy to be left. Davis Mamboleo, who says that the threat is himself and Ruto. We have Calvin, who says corruption involving some very close people to him will ultimately negate his legacy. If any, Uhuru has a chance to create a long-lasting legacy, but he must 